Here's some final thoughts on view number two, the differential form uh, view of the triple vector product identity, or vector triple product. I seem to be saying both things. Um, the one of the things that uh, I was emphasizing in the last couple of videos is the idea that when you take the cross product, at least one version of the cross product is that you're really thinking about two forms. Um, and so I want to just think about, and, and it also one thing I've been talking about is the cross product. In order to get it back to be a vector, you have to have some notion of um, the dot product. Well, what if we just take those two things, two forms and dot product, and take them pretty seriously? Let's say alpha, beta, gamma, and delta are one forms. Then I'm going to create two two forms. This is rather more symmetrical than this thing, where this was like this is a two form, and then you have to w cross this in, and then it ends up being interior product. Uh, it's kind of weird. Okay, although we've seen some nice things about it, certainly. Um, I claim that this has a very nice formula. You just look at the pairwise dot products of these forms and take a two by two determinant. Hopefully that's pretty reasonable. Well, the dot product of two forms, if those two forms are built out of one forms, it should have to do with the dot products of the individual one forms. And anything to do with two forms, that really should have to do with two by two determinants because two forms are kind of encoding two by two determinants. They're encoding areas, okay? So this is pretty funky. Um, but not at all surprising that this would be true, okay? So I'll just have leave it as an exercise, basically, to check this. Um, and you can just check it uh, in a basis, basically. Just, you know, check dx, you know, for example, dxi wedge dxj dotted with dxk wedge dxl. And I'll just remind you what the definition of the dot product on those basis forms, it's equal to if these are if this is an or coming from an orthonormal basis, if the the x coordinates are are orthonormal, then it's just going to be one if i j is the same set as k l, and of course let's assume that they are in the same order as well. So really, as ordered sets, not just unordered. Okay, because order always matters, and then zero. Uh, otherwise, okay. Um, we're just basically defining these guys to be orthonormal as well. These anything of the, this form, okay. So if you do that, it's not a too difficult exercise to see that you get this kind of two by two determinant, okay. Now I just want to show that that gives us a very slick proof of the the vector triple product identity, okay. Because what we're going to do is we're just going to realize that if alpha is some vector tilde, and beta is vector b tilde, gamma is c tilde, and delta is d tilde. And then the way we define dot products on one forms, um, we can just say, okay, we're taking a cross b, and if you turn that into a two form, remember, star tilde. Well, that's just exactly alpha wedge beta, okay? And then this guy, C cross D, star tilde, okay, is going to be, and then these just all turn into dot products of vectors. This is just A dot, a dot C, and then this is B dot C, and this is A dot D, and this is b dot d, okay? But it's, again, not too hard to, s to show that if you take the cross product, turn it into a two form, cross product, turn it into a two form, that should be, and take the dots, that's just should be the same thing as if you just took the dot product of the two crosses, okay? So all basically the idea is all the translations we're doing, all these different kinds of translations between a vector and a one form, a vector and a two form, they're all isometries. They all preserve the dot product. Um, it would be really weird if these dot products didn't match up in all these different translations. Okay, and I don't want to just I don't want to go through the details of showing that, but it's basically just what I am erasing right here. It's just you define 
all the natural things you'd like to be orthonormal bases to be orthonormal bases, and it just works. Okay, so this is interesting. Okay, this is a little bit more than the triple vector brought product identity. It's got two crosses, but it's also got a dot in it. But we can massage this to be rather like the vector triple product with an extra dot in it, and then we'll take the dot out. Okay, so um, I just want to reorder things. Okay, it turns out to be fit up fit with the, the letters that we were using before better if we just exchange the letters A and C. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite it. C cross B. Letters don't matter. And I know this is a little bit cheating, but it's just going to be easier for me to write it down in a slick way to pop out the identity in the usual letters. Um, so if you don't like this kind of letter switch, then you could do it yourself without switching the letters. You'll just get weird letters for the uh, vector triple product identity. Okay, A dot C and C dot A, those are the same thing, so I'm not even going to bother switching the order. Now B dot C turns into a B dot A. And then a dot d turns into a c dot d, and then b dot d doesn't change at all. Okay. Now I'm going to use the fact that this is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, oh, I'm going to do one more thing. Um, let me just switch the order of the b and c and of the DNA, and that doesn't change anything. Okay. So now we're seeing b cross c come in. That's in uh, our desired vector triple product identity, and then here's a d cross a. Okay. Now. I want B cross C to actually stay as a quantity um, because that's actually mentioned in the vector triple product identity. So I don't want to break that up. So let's just for a second, let's just call that E. And then we just recognize, oh, that's a scalar triple product. That is a 3 by 3 determinant. It's a volume calculation. And in particular, if I cyclically permute all the, uh, the symbols, I get the same thing. Okay, so that's the only thing we have to know here, and that's really kind of secretly thinking about the star and the and the orientation and the volume element here. That we're using the fact that um, when we combine dot and cross, we get volume, and that's really again deeply connected to the algebra forms. But as long as you know about that uh, aspect of the scalar triple product, then we'll believe that you can just pop the d out and move the a forward, and then put the a, the e here. Okay, so what is that? That's d dot a cross o b cross c. Ah, okay, that's what we want to analyze, and we're saying that if you dot, if you take that vector and you dot it with a totally random vector d, you get something interesting. Okay, namely, what is this equal? If I just expand it out, it's a dot c b dot d minus. Uh, a dot b, this should start looking familiar, um, c dot d. Notice we got the a dot c and the b, the a dot b and the c, it's all just dotted with d. Hey, that's, that's exactly what we want because this thing is dotted with d. Okay, so what this shows is that indeed, because we, one of the, the only thing we now have to remember is that if I have two vectors, one way to show that they're equal is to show that this vector dotted with any other vector d gives the same thing as this vector dotted with d. Okay, because this, what we got here, is just the right hand side dotted with d, and here is just the left hand side dotted with d, and so they're equal. So, this is a kind of a, a really nice proof, um, and I like that it connects really well with what we were saying with the other form stuff, even though I'm using a lot of um, just vectors here. It really comes from the fact that when you do the cross, you're really getting something that deserves to be think, thought of as a, as a, um, a two form. Um, and so that when you take the, and when you take the dot product to two two forms, the idea of getting a two by two determinant coming out is utterly, utterly natural um, and predictable. And so that's, and then it just falls out really. Um, with just a, a very little more manipulation. So that's pretty cool. Um, I just want to mention this idea of, you know, this, this kind of uh, determinant. I guess I'll write it down one more time. This kind of determinant that we're getting, um, this is also, there's also another reason why this is kind of inevitable. If you think about it, what we're doing is we're taking a bunch of vectors. Let's see if I have more time, yeah. 
just one more minute, bunch of vectors, and we're trying to create a scalar. Okay, and we can only, it's got to be um, geometrically natural. Okay, or another way to say that a little more fancy is that if I take a certain bunch of vectors and I create the scalar, and then I rotate all those vectors and I create, use the same mechanism to create a scalar, I should get the same number. Okay, so in other words, it's rotation invariant. Okay, and I want it to have um, some kinds of discrete symmetries. Symmetries. So that like if I have A, B, C, D in that order, and then I start switching them, then I get predictable results, either plus or minus signs, depending on exactly what I want to do. Okay, um, this is really, really restrictive. There's not that many things you can create that are always going to be rotation invariant and have some kinds of symmetries on the inputs. Um, and the only tools you can really, you really use, basically, are the dot product and the determinant. So you could have, there's a lot of different var variations of this where we would take six vectors or something and we try to do all kinds of crazy stuff with a cross dot and all that kind of stuff. Almost certainly it's going to come out to be something that looks like a more complicated version of this. As long as the result is a scalar, there's not much you can do except for this. So that's kind of waving my hands, but um, the reason I wanted to mention it is it's kind of an introduction, and this will come back up in the next few videos with the third view, to what's called representation theory, and the specific branch of it's called invariant theory. To sort of to basically classify what are all the ways I can do this kind of operation to produce, take a bunch of vectors, produce a scalar in a way that's not just totally random and in particular is um, invariant under rotation, so it's geometrically natural, and that has any kind of other nice properties. That's a whole wonderful field of mathematics. Okay.